I had never seen a fish kill before. And it was probably one of the most emotional things I have ever gone through. Um, I'm a retired science teacher and environmental science was my big thing with my kids. And you talk about these things and but you never really realize what it is until it hits you in the face. And to this day, this long after the fish kill, when I walk down here or I hear this stream up on my porch and I know it's dead, it is, it is, it has an impact on you that you really cannot tell people. How do we reclaim this? This should never have gotten to this point. I don't understand why we have to wait till something is dead before we take care of it. This hits every ecosystem. This has hit the birds, this has hit the mussels, it has hit the insects. Every conceivable thing, they all depend on it. And right here is the lifeblood of this whole area. Mm -hmm. And it's dead. Mm -hmm. Has anyone said what, given your prognosis, when it will rebound? No. Yeah. No. Any thoughts about that? I don't think it will be in my lifetime. Oh, wow. Okay. I know we're not going to see mussels. We're not going to see fish. Mm -hmm. I mean, a muscle that big, you're talking maybe 20 years. Will I ever see it back to where it was? No, no, never. There were some kids down here that were trying to put the fish in buckets of water, trying to keep them alive, and they're crying, and tears are coming down their eyes because where do you take them? There's nowhere to take them because if there's something in this water, it could spread somewhere else. And trying to find an area that is clean you, there's nowhere to take them. And it, it's, it's a devastating blow to this whole community because this was a recreational area. Generations of people came here, grandchildren whose grandfathers and great-grandfathers fished in this area. And it's gone. I know can solve Blacksville number one out of their treating facility. Uh, the water goes right into the dumpster. And the EPA has allowed them. Yeah, you know, there's not just one person at fault. It's all the way through the regulatory system. Did you say that you actually got in your car and followed some of those yes, trucks? Yes, I did. And, uh -huh. well, did. Did those guys get nervous or did they stop? Oh, they and pulled say, off. When they saw me watching them, they pulled off to the side of the road and sat there. And one of them was Burns drilling. Does that tell you anything? Mm. So it just kind of became one big, come one, come all, unregulated yeah, dump. Yeah. Let's just, yeah. let's just dump. Out of sight, out of mind. On Saturday, September the 19th, I followed two trucks up here. Uh, this yellow gate was not closed, and neither was the chain link fence closed. I did watch two trucks go in. Uh, I could hear their pumps dumping, whatever it was and watch them leave. They widened the road up there by the entrance so the trucks could pull off, so the other trucks coming out could get around them. So you know you had a volume of, of truck traffic in here, so they knew what they were doing the whole time. You've got pull-offs right here in front of us and right behind us. And it's all new. It's all new. I've been 40 years in the mine, and I personally would not want to go into black in the two miles. The millions of gallons of water in the inflaxional number one mile, uh -huh. and the amount of distance that was left of unmined coal between uh -huh. blackstone number one and blackstone number two, by federal law, it's sufficient, 500 feet. But when you put the millions and millions of gallons of water up against 500 feet of coal, that's not a real good combination. <laughs> Don't quote me. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. Myself. Yeah.